Okay, so good morning. My name's Nigel Cunningham and I work for Ladoo, a uh, digital agency in Melbourne. I'm just wondering whether it actually is working because I'm pushing the button and nothing's changing. Let's try. Oh, there we go, maybe now. Okay, so there are some things in this world that are just meant to go together. Think, for example, of a lovely stack of pancakes, some maple syrup, some berries on the top. Just works, it's great. Or perhaps a good laptop, running Linux. All the hardware just works right out of the box, no problems at all. I'd love to say that was the case with the, the Lenovo I purchased recently, but the fingerprint scanner lets me down. <laughs> or for example, you might also think of the All Blacks and the Bledisloe Cup. Just belong together, no question. <laughs> Any Kiwis in the room going to support that assertion? Other things, however, you, no matter how hard you try, it just ends in tears. One of the things that's that way in the Drupal world, or has been up till now, is trying to combine web forms and the idea of revisioning and moder moder moderation. For people who might not be familiar with it, web forms is a contributed module that lets you create forms that users of the website, either anonymous users or logged in users, can complete and make submissions. The submissions can be um, then disposed of in a wide variety of ways, email, stored on the site, all sorts of things. It's got a huge amount of flexibility. These screenshots from websites, uh, Webform's own page, show uh, a multi-page form, multiple elements, and of course the nice interface that lets you easily create uh, the forms themselves. In my uh, work, um, at uh, my previous employer, I've only started at Ladu a month or two ago, I had uh, over the course of this year to do a number of quotes for um, building different sites. And one issue that came up time and again was the desire for people to be able to build forms like this, but then make changes to them over time and perhaps have those changes go through a process of moderation and approval. So that's the other part to the, to the problem. You want to be able to take something from a draft status through perhaps a, work, a bigger workflow than this, eventually getting it published and then having older versions there in an archive that you can go back and check. Part of the solution is there already. Drupal has had the concept of revisions right from the, the get-go as far as Drupal 8 goes. Support for workflows has been uh, in core since Drupal 8.4. But there's another piece to the puzzle that we need to solve. And that's the fact that Drupal has two kinds of entities. Perhaps in other talks during the conference you've heard about them already. There are content entities. These are the things that you and I would use just about every day to actually create the content of the website. So you have nodes that you build comments that get added to those nodes, the files and the media that you upload, user profiles for people who are authenticated users on your website, taxonomy terms or your use of the contact form, the submissions there. All those are examples of content entities. Then there's another kind of entity, the configuration entity or config entity. That more relates quite often to the metadata that controls those other content entities. So views, uh, the description of a view is, a, is stored as a config entity. Your menus are stored as config entities. Web forms, which is of course the one we're focusing on right now, a web form itself is a config entity, as are these other things that are mentioned here. So when we try to combine config entities and revisions, we've got a problem because Drupal inherently doesn't support that. Config entities don't extend the classes or don't use the classes that are required for you to have support for revisions and for moderation. So we're back to tears. What can we do about that? 
Well, up till now, the main workaround has been deployment by code. So we all know that I probably the um, general workflow that gets applied when you want to make changes between a development site and a website and a production website. So you might prepare your changes to your web form on dev, export the configuration, apply git flow to get it checked and merged as you ought to do, deploy your updated code base to the production server, import that config and then you can go from there. It's a little bit more complex than that of course, but um, that's the gist of what happens. What if we could do things differently? I mean, it would be really good if we could, because having to go through that workflow involves more time, involves more cost, because you've got to get developers to do, to do that workflow. It can't just be done by an end user of the site. It's just more difficult, and it doesn't work for your maybe relatively cheap mum and dad website where they probably don't have or even know about such a workflow. What if we could do things differently? Well, we've got our web form configuration entity. What if alongside that we put a config entity, a content entity, sorry, and in that content entity we put our different revisions of the configuration entity. We serialize them and we store them in there and use the native revisions support that content entities have to get those, to get it all stored nice and neatly. And then when it's time for us to view a different revision of the web form, well, we hook into the, the class-based system that Drupal provides so we can always load up the right revision we want and carry on. Let web forms do all its stuff that it does natively without any hacking or modification so that it, um, you know, any ugliness. So then you can get your list of revisions, you can publish, you can revert, you could delete web forms and particular revisions to them. You can view and edit and make submissions and view submissions all supporting revisions. Well, that's what I've been working on. Let's have a look at how it works so far with a live demo. Especially if I can get rid of an extra copy of the uh, thing that's loaded up. Let's try that. And get my mouse over there. Ah, there we go. Okay, so. change into my directory. So I'm going to start off by, um, because Drupal's site installer is a little on the slow side, I'm just going to reload a dump of a vanilla install. So we're starting off as if I'd just done a site install. And then I will enable a few modules. So I'll do admin toolbar because it makes things a little nicer and web form UI so we can use web forms nice interface for editing elements and web form revisions. Can everybody see that okay? Yep. yep. Great. Things always take too long when you're waiting, don't they? Okay, and then let's log in. And of course it opens on the wrong screen. And I can't find the mouse anymore. Must be that way. Yes, here we go. Here we go, so here's our screen, we're logged in. So up over here we can go down to the web forms page and we'll just use the default contact form that it provides. And we can come in here and we can see the main change that web form revisions makes that you'll notice straight off is you've got a revisions tab up here now. 
And then further down here, you've got the um, normal interface for creating a new revision. So we've got the original version of the form. Let's um, start off by making a few changes. And I'll just give it a name of new revision and save that. Because it doesn't work, um, editing web forms doesn't work in the way that editing a node normally does, where you create a whole lot of changes on the, the page, and then the last thing you probably do is uh, create the, the new revision and then save it, so you're saving everything at once. It probably makes sense to create the new revision before you start making changes. That way your previous version is going to be untouched by what you then go and do. So let's say we wanted in our new version of the web form to delete the message field and maybe add a checkbox or two. Let's add another one. Bit hard to do this from the side. Okay, so now we've got two revisions of our form. And we can see that on the revisions tab, which should look nice and familiar to those of you who've used revisions before. You've got your original version, our untouched one from the site install, and then we've got our new one. And we can see the, the times they were created just like you can with normal revision stuff. If we want to open it and have a look at it, then we can do that. So we can see our original form still there. And so is our new one. Now we might also want to apply workflows to this because as you can see at the moment the new version is the published one. So let's go up here and go into the workflows UI and I'll just use the default one but of course you don't have to. You could make a special set of um, states for it. Yeah Dan? Hey, you've got five minutes. Oh five That's minutes, okay. <laughs> and um, in here we will turn on support for click the checkbox, turn on support for the revisions, and save. Now if we go back to our form, oops, and back to build, then we've got an additional setting down here to control the state of it. So now we can say that this new revision is only a draft at the moment. So of course we would have wanted to have done that before we started making modifications to the form if we were doing this for real. And in our revisions it will show that too. The current revision is the one that's published. Let's create some submissions. So we've got nothing in there at the moment. If we go and fill in the form a couple of times. I'll just type a bit of rubbish since I'm trying to fit this into five minutes. And let's do one more. And so now if we go back to the list of submissions, whoops, then it will show us those ones against the first one. Let's add, um, publish the other revision and then we will see how it works having deleted fields. So now we've got the other revision live and published. So instead of our message field, we've got the checkboxes. And if we go back to our results tab, then you can see that the first two submissions are there with the, uh, the uh, message that we typed in, but nothing in the checkbox fields. And then you've got the last revision where we changed uh, versions, and we've got no message there, but the checkboxes are used. 
Um, one thing I noticed as I was testing this was that if you try deleting the your email field, um, that one actually disappears from the form as you'd expect, but the value still gets filled in by the um, core web forms code. So it's a bit of an unexpected result. Everything works as you might expect, but it fills that in anyway, so it will still appear there. Um, so that is where we're at with revisions for web forms. It's all available now on the content config entity revisions website if you want to use that today. Um, could this be applied elsewhere? Well, it could be. We've got all those other kinds of configuration entities, so we could theoretically apply this workflow, moderation and, and so on, to views as well, and I've started on that, but not yet got it ready to go. It turns out that views works in quite a different way to web forms, so although the core stuff is, is the same, it requires a bit of extra work. And I haven't looked at the other ones yet, but I expect that that might be possible too. I, I don't see any reason out of the box. I think it would be pretty cool to be able to have revisions for your node types and see, or at least record over time, how you've added fields to, um, to your articles or your blog posts or whatever, um, and also views. And that would work pretty much the same way. So the end result is not tears, but a happy face, hopefully. Of course, the real ideal would be for the support to be in core. The way I'm doing it is not ideal. It, it, ideally, the classes should just extend um, the revision support for config entities too. But I'm sure the core developers have good reasons why they didn't do that. I just don't know what they are. Thanks everyone for your time this morning. Are there any questions? Yes. I did have it checked for the first before I started making the changes. Oh, that was when I made the, the new revision. Then after that I was saying I'm making modifications to the, so the current added revision. To the existing revision. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it needs to work that way because of the fact that unlike nodes, it's not a, a single form that you fill out. Yeah. Yeah, in your demo you, you sort of showed the example of where you were, in the newer revision additional fields added to it, what if a new edition is removing fields and you already have existing results that include those original fields? Yeah, good question. Sorry I didn't show that. It, it will still keep the, um, the original data, that, so I've explicitly made a modification so that the data that was in those fields doesn't get deleted and will still appear on the results field. It's saving the complete configuration of web forms in that uh, content entity. So every change you might make on any of the tabs will all apply to each of the, the revisions and get restored. So even uh, one of my workmates asked me, what if you change the options in a select item? That still works too. The results will still show the original value and then the, the different versions as you load them will show the whatever values are appropriate. Have we got time for just one more question at the back here? Um, how's your uh, entity revision that's work with config import and export? Does it also export the revision for the config entity? And when you import config from your config file, will it also import the revisions? Good question, Sunny. Um, that's something I haven't done integration with yet. It's storing the, um, as I said, storing the revisions in a separate entity, so they, and it's because it's a content entity, they're not yet exported in any way when you do the config entity export. What will get exported will be the latest version of the, of the form. Okay, everyone please thank Nigel. Thank you.